I want to talk about growing up in Fairview. I myself grew up in Clayton Park, and I had friends from Fairview. And not that there was anything wrong with Clayton Park; it was great, but it was uh, it was more of like a, it was a safer community. And whenever I went to Fairview, that's where I, I'd like to say I, I I grew thick skin. I knew I learned to, you know, if someone's making fun of you, you learn to take it, and then you learn to give it to someone else. You learn to be quick. You learn to be witty. You learn to be. It just brings something out of you that didn't growing up in the suburbs. And I just wanted to talk about growing up in Fairview. What that uh, what that was like at a young age back then. Yeah, well. You know, it was, uh, I remember my first memories of Fairview were uh, fighting, right? I remember uh, I was only, like, must have been four or five, I guess, and uh, I kid across the street, uh, me and him were fighting, and he was on top of me, pounding me in the face, and uh, my brother was standing there, and I could see my dad looking down from the deck, you know, and, uh, you know, as he comes down, he says, okay, break it up, he says, now, shake hands, you know, if you win the fight, and told the other guy, he says, you win the fight, so and he said to me, my brother, Rick, he says, um, you guys better come in the house here. He said, I better show you how to fight before you get killed out here, right? <laughs> because that's all fear he was back in those days, right? And so, uh, you know, I still remember it to this day is that what he said to me is not about the fight or anything else. He, you know, he told us to hold our hands and stuff like that. But it was what he said to me that uh, I think had a, a profound effect on my life is that uh, he said, never go into anything thinking you're going to lose. If you're going to think you're going to lose, don't do it. He said, but you never know if you can do something until you really try, right? And so first, when I was a kid, I took that as, well, I'll fight anybody now, right? Just, I think I can win. Yeah. <laughs> so I went through my first few years fighting and stuff like this. Here. And uh, But really, what it meant to me later on, it, it dawned on me that uh, going into anything, thinking you're going to lose, it's just negative energy, right? So I remember when I was, a uh, guy said to me when I was 16, 17, he said, you know how to drive truck? Yeah. Doesn't everybody? Right. Do you know how to do this? I remember when I left home, went to Toronto, lived in the streets, and you know, went looking for a job. The guy said, "Do you know how to, you know, use power saws?" And I said, "Oh yeah, and, oh yeah, I did that all the time. Took a course of that actually." <laughs> further away. Further away. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's you know, and that's the way I approach life. Do you know how to dive, jump, drive jump truck? Yeah. yeah. And the guys, the guys get some trucks. Okay, well, take me for a drive. Show me how to drive it. So I get in. I, and they're, they're diesel, right? Diesel are different than gas, right? So I get in and I'm like, ar, ar, and grinding the gears. And Jesus, I said, this seems to be a little bit different than what I used to drive. <laughs> <laughs> the guy said, here, let me show you how to drive this thing. You know? So he took me out, showed me how to drive it, and I picked it up, and away I went, right? So uh, I never drove a dump truck before in my life. But The things back in the day when you didn't need a certificate. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. They'll believe you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, that's still that's still true today. If you go into, like, if, you're, if somebody asks you, you can do something. You usually take the word for it that they say, yeah, they can do it. Yeah. So I always say, I can do that. Some things I just haven't done yet. Right? I love that. Yeah. When we first started this business, I don't know, obviously you're aware of COVID, but we have a live streaming aspect of our business because when COVID was a thing, parents couldn't go in to see their kids play. So there was kids playing, parents couldn't see. And uh, one parent just came up to us and said, do you guys live stream? We don't live stream, but I used your rule of thumb. Yeah, we do. I didn't, you wouldn't believe the amount of things we had to do in order to get the internet up and running in a ring because you have thick cement buildings. Yeah. You can't get internet through. Well, you're aware of the internet, what your business, but unbelievable the things you could do. I agree with what you say. Just say yes, go for it, even if you can't. Yeah, no, it's, I still do the same thing today. I tell people in my business that uh, you never say no until I tell you to say no, right? We could do anything, right? Some things, like I said, don't, doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you know, we do we do a lot of different things in our business, right? But uh, we do them right, and we just we search it out, we make it happen, and uh, it's all about uh, positive attitude, not being being afraid of stuff. Fear is one of the biggest things that uh, stops people, right? That's this is what uh, uh, I I can't tell you how many people say to me, I, I was going to do that, right? Or I was going to do that, right? Yes, well, I did it, right? So the thing is, is that um, people used fear to, you know find reasons not to do it. I use fear to motivate myself, right? Because I, the last thing in the world is I'm not going to be afraid, right? So I push myself past the fear and uh, yeah, I can do this, right? And uh, some things, like I said, I just haven't done yet, but yeah, you fumble and fall, you you know, bang, you know, get a few uh, bangs and scrapes, but you'll find your way through it. And I always tell people, you know, if you want something bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. You just got to drive. You got to have that desire. I like that. It's known that you were, uh, you dropped out of school at a young age, and I was always wondering why. Was it because you weren't agreeing with the work, you weren't agreeing with the teachers, or you like to implement your ideas better 
it's always known that great entrepreneurs don't really do well in school, but I just wanted to know your reason of why you left. Well, you know, it was, uh, there is probably a lot of reason looking back through time now, but, uh, you know, uh, the people I was hanging out with, and that's why I always say positive role models are important for your children and for your people, right? Um, you need positive role models. And the role models that I was hanging out with there were probably not, uh, you know, these guys are we were hanging out with. They were going to uh, 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 Sudbury to seek their main uh, fame and fortune in the mines. You know, nickel mines up there. They're hiring people. Yeah, let's go up and get a job in the mines. So I said, yeah, sure, I'll go along. But, you know, it was funny because I went and I told my mom I was going to quit school and leave. And I think she, uh, you know, she had she was seven of us, right? And I think she uh, she was worn down quite a bit. So she says, okay. You know, if she had to tell me no, I probably wouldn't have went. But anyway, she's going to let me go. I'm going to go, right? So I quit school and I uh, uh, went with the boys. There was uh, five of us that went up there. And funny thing about that is I was, we were going and we stopped in Toronto. And for whatever reason, I said, I'm going to get out, guys. I'm going to, as far as I'm going, I'm going to stay here. And so they said, what? You know, I said, yeah, I'm going to stay here. So anyways, they went on and I stayed in Toronto. I didn't know anybody, just... Uh, you know, slept in the park and did all kinds of stuff. But, you know, I did find a job and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was crazy. But uh, I just did it. And I don't know, I don't know why. And then I went, out, I went out to Toronto a few other times by myself. Didn't know anybody, but I I always traveled by myself, right? And uh, you after that. And um, I went to Vancouver, worked in the mines, worked, you know, went, worked in the woods up there. And, uh, yeah, I did quite a few different jobs around Canada. And it taught me a lot, right? Taught me that I can survive, right? Do you think that the the rough nature of Fairview built confidence in yourself to be able to hold a conversation with maybe people that you had, you know, strangers? I'll tell you a story about Fairview. <laughs> so, anyways, I was going to go to Toronto, right? Yeah. And the guy says, listen, he says, if you're going to get any trouble out there, just tell them you're from Fairview. And these guys are afraid of people from Halifax, Nova Scotia, right? Just tell them from Fairview, Halifax, Nova Scotia, right? And I said, yeah, okay. So, anyways, so I'm out in uh, Toronto, right? And I got a job at this place. So, I'm... Uh, I'm at this gas station in uh, the hell, uh, Satan's Choice were there, these, the bikers, right? Okay. So uh, the guy says, uh, you know, the guy starts saying stuff in a voice. Uh, one thing led to another. I said something about the guy. I said, get him, right? And so the bus pulls up. I get on the bus. And um, I'm thinking the bus driver, get going, get going. <laughs> Anyways, the bus driver, he lets these guys on. I don't even think he charged them, right? These two guys, these two strikers with him. Anyway, so these guys, um, you know, they're looking at me. Saying, so I go over and I... I lean across the seat and I, I said, listen, guys, I don't know what you guys are looking for, but I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. The guy says, I don't care where you're from. I'll beat the <laughs> shit out of you. Right? And I'm thinking, who told me that? Well, I can only think of who told me that. I got to kill him, right? Anyway, so I went up and I fought the guy and uh, went in the back alley. We fought. And the guy says, hey, we'll go in the back alley. I said, well, let's fight on the street here. Right? And the guy said, no, no, we'll fight in the back alley. So I went up in the back alley and fought him and... Uh, Anyways, it's a good fight.